Good morning, everybody. It's AJ here, and today I want to talk about the C programming language. Hopefully, this is the first of what to become of many tutorials. And what I want to talk about here is a basic C program. I also want to note that in the info section, I will have a link to a text file that outlines what I say so you can read with what I'm going along with in the video. So, without further ado, I want to simply create a simple C program and highlight what each command does. A little history of C is that it was invented in Bell Laboratories by a famous man named Dennis Ritchie, who actually died around the same time Steve Jobs died, but not many people remember who he is. So the first thing I'm going to do on line one line one is write stdio.h. I'm going to put hashtag like Twitter include stio.h which is as it says in the text file a file to include a C library file that has additional functions that I can use for my C program. The braces indicate I mean not the braces, but the carrots, the sideways carrots indicate that tell the program to look for this C file in the C main library instead of your external, your your storage such as your documents or other places. It the carrots tell it to look in the C directory. Now, what else? Uh, now, I'm what I'm going to do before I write my first function. As you learn, I'm going to write a comment indicated by the slash slash. As you see, it's highlighted in green. This is a comment. This is an oldie but goodie. Anyway, these comments do not actually affect the code at all. What they do is they outline. To, the, to anyone reading the code what is actually going on in the programming. It is good to comment your code so you yourself and others looking at your code can know what's happening if it's confusing or not straightforward. Good commenting is very essential to being a great programmer. So what I'm going to show you here is a famous function called the hello world function which Dennis Ritchie shows himself in his own book. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to declare a function called main, which is run in every C function. <laughs> and let me outline what I just did here. What I did is I call I made a function called main. Um, you can this main is what the C compiler looks for. And the main program is required for every C program and is what the C compiler looks for and runs at the, when you run your C program. Note it must be main all lowercase just like it is right here. Now, again, if you're asking yourself what is a compiler, a compiler is something that takes this human high level language, as they like to call it, or just this human language, and converts it all down to machine language such as zeros and ones for the computer to decide because the computer can only understand zeros and ones. Everything you see is simply a huge manipulation of zeros and ones. It's quite beautiful what the compiler does. Now as you see I have something called int right before main. Int indicates what the function returns. So in this case main is going to return int. int is short for integer, which is a whole number. Whole numbers can be, I'm going to comment this, negative 2, or 6, or a million, or 1 bazillion, but they can't be any number with decimals, such as 1 half, 3 fourths, or anything like that. So main is a whole number. Helps to know math <laughs> when you learn programming. Okay, so now these braces indicate that main is a function. And these braces also indicate that it has z these blank braces indicate that it has zero parameters. Now, what are parameters? Parameters are things that you enter in a function that are values that you may need to perform certain certain functionality with your program. For instance, you can't simply just add two numbers. 
you need two numbers to add together. Those two numbers that you need to add, to get, add together, such as 1 plus 2, can be thought of as parameters for the add principle. Just as in main, you may need an integer to do something with that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a pretty often function used in C called printf. And printf is a function that outputs a string to the screen. And as you can see here, I have hello world. Printf is a function that I imported with the include statement up here on line one that goes that looks into the C library and grabs it for me so I am able to use the printf function. Notice here that I have braces that start and end before the semicolon and what this is saying is that I am giving the printf function a parameter and this parameter I'm giving it is a string. A string is, us is usually represented used to represent words and phrases and stuff like that. Note that I can put numbers in a string and I won't get any errors or I can put some symbols such as these in a string and everything will be okay. I will make sure there are many particulars about the printf statement that we will get into later. So printf as I said again will simply print whatever I put in here to the console. No, notice also how I have closing and ending quotation marks. I can't just have a starting quotation mark that doesn't end. I will get a warning that says unbounded string encountered because I need to end the string if I start it. You must all, always end and start quotation marks, parentheses, and brackets as you see I have here. What I'm going to do after the printf statement is I'm going to add a multi-line comment. Now as you see here, I have a single line comment. If I do a slash slash, that indicates that I'm doing a comment which will not affect this code. As you see, it turns green. Now if I wanted to write a paragraph, I could simply do that by pressing enter and it will expand for me automatically. This is how I could write a paragraph, let's say, if I wanted to explain maybe a huge program or I just wanted to write a lot without simply writing a lot of single line comments like this. As you can see, that can get tedious because every time I have to do the slash, whereas every time I press enter, a little star is, out, is made for me automatically and I'm able to say what I want to say. So I'm going to just say this prince hello world to the screen and I misspelled hello it doesn't really matter that I misspelled hello because it's a comment but it's good to have good spelling and now for the last statement I'm going to put a return zero and the reason because I have to put return zero is because in my main function which is required for all C programs as I said I said I would return an integer. So I returned 0. I could put return 10, return 100, return 12. I could return any integer I wanted to. I could also return a variable if I wanted to. If I had an if I had passed in an integer i or something of that sort, then I could simply do that. But I I talk about that more in the documentation included in the info section of this video. So let's get to running this. I'm going to click the play button up here after saving it and it's going to launch and as you see in the console it prints out hello world. Now note if I modified this with a quotation mark and saved it then boom hello world would be printed out. Good things to remember about this video is that there is there are many keywords in C such as return and int and that's why they're in purple and for instance, I cannot name a variable int because it's a special keyword in C. There's not many of these. There's about 30 to 40, but they're very important, and you will get to know all of them hopefully throughout these tutorials. That is all I have today. If you have any more questions, I have more information in the little article I wrote in the comment section. As I said again, I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks.